optimal black box reductions between optimization objectives. This is the joint work with Elad Hazen. Consider the famous composite convex optimization problem that is to minimize the summation of a regularizer and the finite sum of a bunch of loss functions. So here the regularizer can be either the L1 loss or L2 loss, or more generally, it could be either strongly convex or not strongly convex. Each loss function can be either, say, the hinge loss or the least square loss, or more generally, it can be either non-smooth or smooth. So depending on which regularizer and which loss function you really have, then there are four natural classes of optimization objectives, each of them corresponding to some very famous machine learning problems, such as SVM, ridge regression, lasso, and so on. At the same time, if we look at the existing algorithms, there are really a lot of them, like SVRG, Pegasus, SDCA, Saga. So each of them solves only one of the four classes of the problems. This definitely has created a lot of job opportunities, but in this talk, I want to ask a very fundamental question. Is this landscape really necessary? For instance, can we hope to get reductions so that as long as we get algorithms for the first class, say the topmost class, we automatically get algorithms for the remaining three classes at once. So our result in this paper says that, yes, this is possible, and not only possible, we provided three reductions that are both optimal and practical, meaning that as long as you have an optimal algorithm, say for the first class, if you turn it into a method for the second class, then it's going to be also optimal there, up to constant factors. And our reductions are also practical, meaning that the outperformance is not only observable in practice, but also this reduction does not create additional parameter tuning difficulties. It doesn't make practitioners harder to use the algorithms. Let me illustrate this by focusing on just two classes for simplicity. Before our work, actually, there existed already some reduction. That is very simple. Take a non strongly convex function fx here, then let's add some strong convexity. Add epsilon times the Euclidean norm square and call this function x f prime. Now choose your favorite algorithm for the first class and um, use it to minimize f prime. So such reductions are essentially folklore and people really use it but hate it for at least two reasons. One, such a reduction is not practical. So here, because we are adding an additional term and changing the objective, now the minimizer of the new problem is no longer the minimizer of the old problem, meaning that the solution becomes biased. The larger epsilon is, then the more biased it becomes. But at the same time, if you choose epsilon to be very, very small, then the running time, the performance of the algorithm will become slower. So which epsilon do I put there? In practice, people really need to do parameter tuning, but even if you do parameter tuning, which curve do you pick here? It becomes just very painful to use them. And two, such reductions are not optimal, meaning that if you use this reduction, the fastest convergence rate for stochastic method you can get is only log t over t squared while at the same time, the optimal convergence rate is 1 over t squared. In our paper, we provide new reductions, and the red curve is what we obtained. The picture explains itself. Our reduction is both optimal and practical, as you can see from the picture. It's practical because the red curve just approaches to the minimizer. It's unbiased, and it doesn't need any parameter tuning. And also, it's optimal because it's a log factor faster than all the blue curves even combined. Finally, we designed not only one reduction, but remember three reductions, which together with the optimal method for the first class, which is in an independent work that has already appeared online, then everything put in together gives us a 1 over t squared convergence rate for among stochastic methods for this class of non-strongly convex and smooth objectives, and this one over t squared rate is the first and the optimal. 
and one can also get the 1 over t squared for the third class and the 1 over t for the last class. That concludes my talk of today. Thanks for listening.